God, Father, we come right now, Lord. We come right now, Lord, thanking you for this day that you have made. Lord, for we know that you are God. You are in control. Lord, as we, as we come right now, Lord, we come with, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, thank you for what you have done. Lord, we ask now that you touch those who are in your Lord. We touch those who have heavy hearts, Lord. They may be crying right now, Lord. But one touch from you can dry tears. Lord, we pray for those who are on the front lines. We pray for those doctors. We pray for those nurses. We pray for those essential workers who are caring for those who are ill. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. Touch right now, Lord. Some may feel that there's no hope. But with you, Lord, there's always hope. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the hope that you have. Thank you for what you've done. Lord, we ask a special prayer for our pastor, Lord. Give him strength to lead throughout this global pandemic, Lord. And we begin to, to venture out, Lord, and stay with us. Let's be so service 
uh, but we're not going to announce a time till we hear more information about what, what is occurring in this phase one uh, of the uh, containment and mitigation of the coronavirus in an effort to be able to reopen. Uh, again, we do say we're going to uh, try for some date in June, but we're going to wait to hear more information uh, so that we will not put any of our congregants uh, at uh, a risk and we will be able to communicate uh, uh, effectively the policy and plans. And we do want to thank so many people who are, are working at this time to make it possible. We will be ready, but we want to safely be ready. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So my brothers and sisters, it is our giving time. It is giving time, and again, I want to thank all of you, the members of Donaldson uh, Chapel, who have enabled us to deal with this challenging uh, period. There has been challenges, uh, there has been expenses involved in doing what we're doing, but we thank you, and we want you to continue to sacrificially give. As again, you can wow. give, you can mail your offering to two five zero one. Gracie Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 2501 Gracie Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, you can um, send your offering by Cash App, which is dollar sign, Donaldson, D-O-N-A-L-D-S-O-N, 2501. Dollar sign, Donaldson, D-O-N-A-L-D-S-O-N, Two five zero one, or you can always uh, uh, place it in the mail slot in front of the uh, church. And if you have been sharing uh, during this uh, shutdown and isolation isolation period, uh, and uh, the the services that have been uh, blessing you, and the services that have been blessing you, uh, you can also use those addresses and methods. Uh, to contribute uh, to the ongoing worship service here at Donaldson uh, Chapel. Uh, in future time, you'll be hearing more about our, our star banquet and, and what we're going to be doing with children and, and, and Sunday school. Uh, we ask uh, that you remember 12 noon Bible study, uh, 7 p.m. Bible study on Wednesdays, Donaldson Chapel Baptist Church BR. Also, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, prayer service, uh, and today at 12 noon, uh, our Sunday school conference. But you will also be hearing more and more about other ministries and activities. Again, uh, let's give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. Amen. There's a child in my mother's care. Mama told me, girl, let's begin.
will forget. My mom's hope on me. She said, son, Jesus will always be there.
Dr. Regan. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning will come from Psalm 13. Our scripture reading from Psalm 13. We will read it in its entirety. Again, that's Psalm 13. Reading from the NIV. Bible and reads, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Amen. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. <coughs> amen, 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 amen. As we prepare for God's word this morning, we do want to remind you uh, that during this period uh, that there are still illnesses, there are still ups and downs, and we want to uh, ask you to continue to pray for uh, members uh, who are sick and uh, stand in the need of uh, prayer. We want you to pray for Sister Judy uh, Haywood, who had a hospital stay, but she's at home and, and doing uh, better. We ask that you also pray for uh, Sister Rosalind Richard, who is in uh, uh, rehab, continue to pray for, for uh, Coach Brown and uh, uh, Sister Patricia Dunn. Uh, we ask that you pray for Sister uh, Jessie Bogner. Uh, she's been asking for prayer. And remember all those uh, uh, who prayed for and were seeking prayer that we announced at 6 p.m. Uh, prayer service. And remember that prayer changes things and pray that the Lord keep us uh, during this uh, period uh, that we attempt to uh, deal with uh, the coronavirus. So uh, again, let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect thing, we come now, Lord, saying, strengthen us, hold us in the hollow of your hand. Be with us. Keep us, Lord. Now, Lord, uh, we ask that you watch over us. And uh, we ask that you uh, touch us in a unique way at this time. When we come to study your word, proclaim your word, receive your word. Now, Lord, we ask that you, in, in, at this time, in, in, uh, that you touch us. Hold us in the hollow of your hand. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen and amen. We ask that you look at uh, a chapter, I mean, Psalm 13. Psalm uh, uh, 13 will serve as the, the background of our message this morning. And we want to talk to you uh, on the topic of joy in a horrible situation. Joy in a horrible situation. Uh, Psalm uh, 13 is a, a prayer. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 13 authorship is assigned by tradition to uh, David. But Psalm 13 is a, a prayer. 
And Psalm uh, 13 is a prayer that involves both a complaint to God and it also involves uh, an expression of confidence in, in God. So in verses uh, 1 through 4, uh, in David's prayer, uh, there is clearly a, a complaint without any expression of joy. In verses 5 and 6, in verses 5 and 6, in verses uh, 5 and 6, we uh, see that, that there is expression of confidence in God. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you how many times, uh, uh, how many of you know that you love the Lord, but you find yourself every now and then, uh, uh, you want to ask the Lord, why? Why are you dealing with so much uh, in your life? How many of you know that 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 you, know that you, you love the Lord, but you, you still find yourself asking, you still find yourself asking the Lord, how, when, and where uh, did I get into so many horrible uh, uh, situ situations? Uh, well, this song inspires me to tell you, you can still have joy. Yes, you can still have joy in a horrible situation. Well, I'm here to uh, tell you that uh, complaining to God uh, keeps your relationship real with the Lord. Complaining to God keeps your relationship real with the Lord. We cannot trick God. We can perpetuate with people but we can never slip the, the law. When you look at this text, uh, the, the author, David, uh, is asking the Lord, how long will the Lord allow this horrible situation, this condition that he is in? Uh, in verses 1 and 2, he said, how long will the Lord <coughs> uh, continue to forget about him? How long will the, the Lord uh, presence uh, be absence uh, in his life? How long will he wake up in the morning with a confused mind and a disturbed spirit? How long will his enemy still declare victory over him and he will continually uh, be surrounded by haters, hounds uh, running him down? <coughs> How long? And many times uh, we would ask how long. Uh, but well, one of the things about being transparent and real, uh, complaining will keep your relationship with the real with the Lord because you cannot trick God uh, and you cannot slip God. But also uh, something else about complaining you clearly see that the psalmist in his prayer is complaining in verse 1 and 2. But uh, uh, something else about complaining, uh, complaining, uh, com com complaining without season will kill your joy. Complaining without ceasing will kill your joy. Uh, how many of you like to be surrounded by someone who complains all the time? All they do is complain. From morning to night. Complain, complain, complain. I, I, I have a friend who has a very important uh, job with a lot of authority. And one day we were talking about uh, a certain news network and I mentioned something to him about it, and he said, no, I don't listen to that news, especially in the morning, because they say some stuff 
on that network, it just messes me up the whole day. My spirit is off the whole day. Other words, kills his job. And I'm here to tell you, if, if you're always pessimistic, cynical, and skeptical, and living in the negative, and that's all you surround yourself with, that's all you listen to, it will kill, it will kill your joy. Yes. Well, well, but I, I, I want you, you, you to know that uh, a, a joyless, joyless life is a miserable life. A life uh, filled with doubt uh, and is based on uh, 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 deep, hidden uh, depression. But true joy, true joy is deeper than happiness. Oh, you need to hear that. True joy is deeper than happiness. Uh, happiness is based on two factors. One chance and the other circumstances. But you need to know, life is risky and, 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 and too often uh, we do not have any control uh, over the things that create horrible circumstances uh, in our life. But, 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 I, but I'm here to, to tell you, I'm talking about a deeper experience in the, the Lord. I am talking about an experience uh, uh, where, where you experience the presence and the goodness of the Lord and the favor of the Lord flowing into your life. And then this is what we call joy, uh, unspeakable joy, a joy that the world cannot give you and the world cannot take you away. And that's what we're talking about uh, uh, is it, it, joy. Uh, and we can have this joy in spite of a global pandemic. Uh, you, you, you can experience this joy in spite of the horrific situations uh, in your life. Uh, we can experience this joy uh, in spite of the calamity and chaos uh, in, in, in within society. A joy unspeakable joy and you can have joy uh, in a horrible situation. Well, when you look at uh, the, 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 the text in verse 3 uh, and 4, the, the, the uh, psalmist uh, petitions the Lord in his prayer. He says, look on me and answer uh, Lord my God in verse 3 and he says, give me light in my eyes or uh, 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 or I will sleep in death, and my enemies will say I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice uh, when I when I fall. Well, he's petitioning uh, the Lord. But when we get to, to verse 5, uh, I, I want to tell you, it allows us to see that if you continue to trust in the love of God, God will never stop loving you. If you continue to trust in the love of God, God will not stop loving you. Because in verse 1 through 4, the psalmist is complaining, but in verse 5, switches gears. In, in verse 5, repeat uh, uh, after me. Uh, the word says, wherever you are, repeat after me. It says, but I trust in your unfailing love, my heart rejoices in your salvation. Amen. Amen. But I trust in your unfailing love. And what we're pointing out, what uh, the scripture teaching us this morning is that uh, continue to trust in the love of God. And God uh, will never stop loving you. That is very important because when you continue to trust in, in the Lord, and in spite of your horrible situation, in spite of the complaining, in spite of the negativity that's, that, that's in your mind and in your, in, in your spirit, uh, but if you continue to trust 
in the love of God. Uh, you will find your joy voice. Oh yes, you heard what I said. If you continue in spite of what you're going through, to trust that God loves you, you will find your joy voice. Well, I'm saying that every believer, each and every one of us, <clears throat> we have a joy voice in us because we were created by the Almighty and, and God breathed the breath of life into us. And when we believe, uh, His Spirit uh, unites with us in a unique way through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and when you experience that love, oh, it's a, it's a forever love. It's a forever love. That is why John said that God so loved the world that whoever believes will not perish but have what? Everlasting. That's, that's a, a forever love. And when you look over in Psalm 16, uh, uh, a few psalms over from Psalm 13, in verse 8, you hear the psalmist says, uh, uh, in verse 9, uh, Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. It says he will rejoice. And in verse 8, he says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. See, when you know that the Lord is there, when you know the Lord is with you, but when you know the Lord is with you, you will find your uh, joy voice. And when you find your joy voice, uh, we're talking about on the inside of you, uh, it will transfer the transform the internal and you will transcend the external. You will transform your internal and that will allow you to transcend the external. What's on the, what is on the inside of you or what more importantly, who is on the inside of you will give you the voice and the joy to change what is going on on the outside. Well, well, well when you have your joy voice, uh, that allows you to give you that joy in spite of what is going on on the outside. See, your joy voice will speak uh, humbly to the Lord in spite of you. So we said David is the author uh, of, of, of this psalm. And, 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 and David knew how to speak humbly to the Lord uh, because we know that David was not perfect that, and how many of you out there you've done some things you should not have done you said some things you should not have done you, you've tried some things where you have failed in life uh, uh, and, and things seem to be all messed up uh, uh, but, but, but David uh, prayed in, in Psalm 51 uh, he prayed for uh, forgiveness. Uh, King James translation, he said, blot out my transgressions. But one thing, when David got to the end of that prayer, he said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Uh, see, my brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes when you're going through something, and many times when we are going through something, it's all about us. It's about the sin in our lives. Sometimes it's not the coronavirus. It's not the politics of the government. Sometimes we have failed. We have messed up. We have fallen short. We have made mistakes. We have missed the mark. But when you know that God still loves you, when you know that you can humbly approach uh, the Lord and say, take not your spirit from me. Take not the Holy Spirit. Because the joy arises from experiencing the presence of the Lord in your life. And see, when you know that you know that the Lord loves you, when you know that you know that you love the Lord, when you believe God and His Spirit lives in you, uh, uh, the presence of the Lord comes to you through the fruit of the Spirit. Now, in Galatians 5, it says what? The fruit of the Spirit. Love. Peace, joy, joy, 
But that's what that's what the Lord would do uh, uh, when you find your joy voice. When you find your joy voice, you will be able to speak humbly to the Lord. Uh, that relationship will be real. When, when you find your voice, a joy voice, uh, let me tell you, on the on the inside, uh, your voice will shake with laughter. So what you talking about, preacher? Yeah, your voice uh, will shake with laughter. Uh, uh, when you wrecked in negativity, there's no laughter in your life. You know, laughter, laughter should be good for you. Laughter is good for you. Laughter is good for us. You know, when there's no laughter in your life, uh, it's an evidence of the lack of joy. When you're in pain, it, it is hard to laugh. La uh, laughter helps ease pain. But, but in order to laugh, we, one, one must be relaxed. And, 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 and they tell me, the scientist says, that in our brain we have uh, endorphins. Uh, in uh, dolphins, uh, cells in our brains, uh, 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 the neurology of how our brain made up. Uh, uh, but to say when you laugh, huh, they are released into our, 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 our brains and, and it mixes up the, with the opioid elements in our brain. And in other words, to break it down, when, when you laugh, it gives you a natural high. Uh, you don't need any other stuff. So, so, so sometimes when we lock out laughter in our life, when we so wrapped up, so wrapped up in cynicism, but uh, but you need when you find your joy voice, in spite of what is going on around you, uh, that you can find some laughter uh, in your life. And I know many of you heard over and over as they talk about in the news media about the depression because of the coronavirus. That they say one thing you can do is don't overload yourself with the news media. Don't overload yourself with hearing the negative. Get the information you need, but you need to find some time for a little laughter in your life. But it's clear that the psalmist found laughter and joy in his life because he was asking the Lord, how long? And he said, Lord, answer me. But then he says, but I will trust in your unfailing love. And I'm sure that he found his joy box and put a smile on his face and some laughter uh, in his voice. But, but when you find your joy voice, uh, I'm here to tell you, your boy Joyce will shout, shout down the suffering and sorrow in your life. Your joy voice will shout down the suffering, the suffering and sorrow in your life. Well, the Bible is real. It does not try to ignore that suffering and sorrow are real occurrence in life. Uh, but you know, God is present even in the time of suffering and sorrow. God is moving even in the time of trials and tribulation. God is moving even when you're trying to get from one point to another point. God is moving as you're trying to come from uh, uh, downward to be in upward mode, God is there and moving uh, in your life. But uh, you cannot, uh, you would need your joy voice to, to help you to shout loud enough of the pain in your life. You got to shout over all that is going on in, in, in your life. But uh, in, in fact, in Psalm 126 and 5, in Psalm 126 and, and 5, uh, the Bible uh, says, uh, the, we're talking about 
when the people were going through a bad time. I've been discussing in Sunday school, and the Lord restored the Judeans to Jerusalem. Uh, look what the psalmist says in, in Psalm 5, uh, uh, verse 1, uh, Psalm 126. He said, those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, Carry seed to sow. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, what we're, we're, we're getting at, you will sow in tears, but you will reap in joy. You will sow in tears, but you will reap in joy. Let me say, that doesn't make sense. Yes, you will sow in tears, but you will reap in joy. Now, think back when you first bought that uh, home and you had 20, 25 year and 30 year mortgage. Think back when you had to raise children. Now, think back when you had to borrow and scuffle uh, to get student loans to get diplomas and degrees and certificates. Uh, you had those who brought in tears. Uh, you raised children uh, in tears. Uh, you worked jobs uh, with tears in your eyes. Uh, uh, you, you build relationships uh, uh, based on tears. Uh, you sow in tears. Uh, but uh, the benefit is joy. The fruit is joy. And I'm here to tell you, uh, you well, your, your tears are, are not well, uh, are wasted. Uh, when you find your joy voice, uh, when you find your joy voice, uh, the, your, your tears uh, will shout over. You remember uh, what the bishop said. He said, your tears uh, are an expression uh, that can't be controlled. The bishop, he said, uh, a little crying now is all right. Uh, but after a while, you won't have to cry anymore. Uh, what he was getting to is that we've been uh, made to uh, for the night. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that joy will come in the morning. Uh, you can shout uh, over your tears because uh, he promised you uh, joy. Uh, you've been promised peace uh, and you won't have to cry no more. Uh, you won't have to worry no more. All you got to do is hold on uh, to God's unchanging hand. Hold on. And the Lord will uh, make a way uh, somehow. I'm here to tell you uh, this song uh, is a song of complaining. Uh, this song uh, is with a word of joy. Uh, but you just don't need uh, to have just read uh, this song in times of trouble, uh, in horrible times. Uh, because life uh, is a mixture of joy and pain. Uh, in this life, uh, there will be a little pain. Uh, but as long as you keep your hand in the Lord's hand, uh, as long as you trust in the Lord, uh, as long as you walk with the Lord, uh, as long as you be positive, uh, as long as you know that the Lord loves you, uh, you will be able to, with your joy voice, uh, never stop singing praises unto the Lord. Uh, when you look uh, at the last verse uh, in our song, uh, in the NIV, uh, repeat after me. Uh, I said, I will sing the Lord's praise. For he has been good to me. Amen. Did you hear what the song 
right where you are, you can say, Lord, I'm on the return walking with you. You can say, Lord, I give you my life. I know that your son, name is Jesus. He lived, died, was raised from the dead, and I believe you can come right where you are. Say, Lord, I give you my life. We ask at that time that you give the Lord your life. You go to somebody's church and you begin to experience the love and the fellowship. We ask that you do that. Then, down some trouble, we ask that you keep praying. And keep your hand in the Lord's hand. Amen. We ask that you join us. <clears throat> 12 noon Bible study, 7 p.m. Bible study, uh, 6 p.m. prayer service. Uh, as we will uh, briefly repeat, we will we have made plans and put together a policy for reopening in June, but we're not going to give a date until we are certain about safety uh, and, and some, some issues. So, but we are working. But until then, we will continue to live stream uh, Donaldson Chapel Baptist Church beyond. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest ruling and abide with us. Now his forth and forevermore.